In this video, we will dissect the source type known as scholarly journal article, so you'll know exactly how they differ from other types of articles, and you can be sure to select only the sources that make the grade. Here are a couple examples of scholarly articles. These two look very different at first glance, but by the time I'm done dissecting them for you, you will see the key scholarly characteristics which differentiate them from other kinds of articles and information. The first thing we are likely to read is the title. Titles of scholarly articles are factually descriptive and frequently incorporate technical terms or disciplinary concepts. For novice scholars such as yourself, the titles will likely seem boring at the very best and completely incomprehensible at the worst. It's best to think of scholarly article as the author's contribution to a conversation that has been taking place for a long time before you arrived. As you begin your journey into the world of scholarship, it's not uncommon to see words in a title which you do not recognize and you'll need to look them up. As you gain knowledge and become more familiar with the scholarly conversations taking place, you will soon learn all the important technical terms and concepts, and then the titles will become more interesting to you. The author's names usually appear near the title. In addition to their names, scholarly articles will include additional details about the author, such as their institutional affiliations and contact information. This is an important difference from other non-scholarly source types. The affiliation information, such as the university or company that the authors work for, helps to inform the reader about the person speaking. It's like a mini introduction or sharing a business card. Sometimes this information can provide important context for the conversation. For example, a researcher working at a for-profit company likely has different motivations and resources available than a researcher who's working at a publicly funded university. This kind of context is important as you evaluate the article for potential biases, which is also another reason why some articles will include statements about sources of funding for the research. Just as a business card allows you to follow up with a person by contacting them at a later time, scholarly articles include contact information for primary authors in the form of email addresses. Because a scholarly article is just one contribution to an ongoing conversation, authors really want to be in touch with others that they're conversing with. An email address provides a means for side conversations between readers and authors, and for follow-up questions and idea sharing that isn't suited to the larger group discussion taking place in the scholarly literature. The abstract is a summary or preview of the contents of the article. Reading the abstract will give you a good idea of the key focus and findings of the research presented in the article. There are two main ways abstracts are typically formatted. One of these ways features subheadings that highlight relevant information from sections in the article, such as the research question or objective, the methodology that's being used, the key findings or results, and a conclusion or directions for future research. If the abstract is not formatted with these subheadings, then it's typically a single paragraph. The same basic elements of the abstract will still be present, which includes the research question, methodology, key findings, and conclusion. While it is a useful tool when determining if an article will be relevant to the topic you're researching, it is important to note that the abstract itself is not a replacement for reading the whole article. In fact, sometimes abstracts have been found to be misleading. The close reading of the article itself may reveal that the results presented in the abstract have been exaggerated. A research article always begins with an introduction, although it may or may not be labeled. Within the introduction, the authors describe the topic or research problem that they are investigating. This is where they will present their thesis, argument, or research objective. Often, the introduction provides context to understanding the relevance of the research question or the prospective importance of the findings to the research community or beyond. An overview of related research and findings is necessary when providing that context. In some cases, there is a need to create a separate section of the article called a literature review to properly account for that related research. 
When a literature review section is included, it provides a summary of all the sources the author has read before digging into their own research project. This can be a goldmine for your research. This section demonstrates how much or what parts of the ongoing scholarly conversation the researcher is familiar with, and in effect, what part of the conversation they are responding to. As you learn more about the conversations taking place, you may also be able to identify when meaningful parts of the conversation are missing, which would be important to the evaluation of the article overall. Early in the article, researchers need to share information about the methodology they are using to answer their research question. Not all methodologies are equal. Choosing a methodology requires careful consideration so that the data required to provide useful answers is accurate and relevant. Authors of scholarly articles will typically share a rationale for the research method they have selected and explain why it's a good fit given the data that they require. Strong method sections also include a description of any and all possible limitations of the methodology or the accuracy of its findings. Doing so demonstrates informed consideration of the research question and the means to approach answering it accurately. Replicability is another aim to providing information about the research method used. In order for research findings to be considered valid, it should be possible to recreate the research and get the same results. Description of the methodology used should be descriptive enough to allow another researcher to reproduce the findings. Unlike other kinds of articles, scholarly journal articles very rarely contain pictures. Many contain only text, as in paragraphs or quotations. However, depending on the topic you're researching, the article may also contain things like graphs, charts, equations, and other visual depictions of the data or the process. These visual representations are included only as a means to factually represent the research. You should pay careful attention to information presented in these ways to ensure that the data matches the conclusions that the authors make from them. The authors of a scholarly article will discuss their research process and noteworthy elements of the findings in more detail. Frequently, these details will appear in a section labeled discussion. Here, you can expect to see further comments on limitations or problems encountered when implementing the methodology. Noteworthy findings will be highlighted by providing additional context using previous research, such as that cited in the literature review, or other similar studies. The authors may draw some conclusions about the research and the significance it has in this section. This is part of the article where authors really add their own voice to the ongoing scholarly conversation by contributing new information to the discussion. The last section to the article is the conclusion. As you can guess by its name, this is the section where the authors offer a final summary or state what they can conclude from the research project. When determining if an article will be useful to your research project, it can be useful to read this section after you read the abstract. Within the conclusion, authors should accurately represent information provided throughout the article, especially the noteworthy findings and why they are significant within the context of the scholarly conversation. Sometimes it's appropriate for authors to make recommendations about future action or future research that is needed based on the results within the conclusion. These recommendations may be useful to you as you develop and refine your own research question. Throughout the article, you will have noticed the authors have included quotations or other references to work produced by other people. These references to others are valuable evidence of scholarship and the ethical information practice of providing attribution to the original sources of information. This allows all readers to track down the sources used to verify the author's claims or learn more on a topic. In order to find a source, one needs many pieces of information, such as the title, author, date of publication, title of the journal and journal volume and issue numbers, and so on. If one were to include all of that information within the body of a sentence, it would be very hard to read 
that research article, as all those details would be repetitive and distracting. For this reason, systems of citation and referencing have been developed to allow for more efficient in-text citation. Using in-text citations allows full details about a work that is cited to be provided in the final reference list or bibliography after the article. The reference list is a feature that separates research and scholarship from other kinds of articles. Scholarly articles typically have more than one page full of sources listed in the bibliography section. For more information on citation styles and which style you should use, please review your assignment description and check out the library's citation guides.